So I just want to welcome everyone to this webinar. It's called Awaken Your Intuition. And uh, yeah, um, this is my passion. This is my, I just love teaching people how to access their intuition. Um, it's what I do every day in my life. And I'm just really grateful for all of you that's managed to join me today. And what we're going to do in today's webinar is I'm going to make two promises to you. One is that we're going to share seven steps that you need to take in order to access your intuition. And the other one is that we're going to explore four different ways of accessing intuition. Okay, because different people are different and not everyone receives their intuitive messages in the same way. And in actual fact, there are 20 or more different ways and we're just going to focus on the top four today, the more, more common ones. Just a brief slide about me in case there's anyone on the call who doesn't know me already. I used to be a scientist. I have a PhD in science and I also used to be a business negotiator. <laughs> and uh, I now focus on something very different than that, which is to teach intuition, to teach meditation. And uh, I spend all my time doing that. So, are you in the right place? Well, you are in the right place if any of the things on this slide apply to you. So, if you have had unexplained experiences or you receive messages but you don't know if you can trust them, if you doubt yourself and you want to overcome your uncertainty, if you get frustrated and wish that you knew what was blocking you, or you want to sort of learn or have validated your intuition style. Or even though you're aware of receiving your intuitive guidance, you're not able to act upon it. So they're, they're all reasons that you're in the right place. And I'm just going to share my favorite quote about intuition. And it's from a scientist, Albert Einstein. And he said that the rational mind is a faithful servant and the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and that we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And I really believe that it describes my personal journey really, really well. Uh, I started out like most of us being told to honor the servant and ignore the gift. But I turned it around in my life and, and so can you. I firmly believe that intuition is, we are spirit and intuition is how we communicate with one another. And so um, we are missing a big part of who we are if we don't use our intuition. Here's a dictionary definition of intuition. It's the ability to understand something immediately without the need for conscious reasoning. So why would you want to awaken your intuition? And there are lots of reasons. And people mostly think about the spiritual reasons for awakening intuition. And these are some of the most common ones. I want to know why I'm here. What's the purpose to my life? I want, to, I want to understand myself better. I want to understand other people better. I, I want to receive my higher guidance and remove my limits and feel more confident and, and empowered. There are also emotional benefits to developing your intuition. It can actually improve your relationships with other people. Because when you're intuitive, you're able to read other people without your own filters that distort information. And because you know yourself better, you're better able to have emotional boundaries. You're more resilient to change. You 
doubt yourself less. You've got less fear and anxiety. And of course, the pathway to developing your intuition includes meditation. And therefore, all of the benefits that meditation gives you come along with hand in hand with developing your intuition, like stress relief and so on. And of course, then there are physical benefits because if you're meditating and you're, you're dealing with all of your emotional issues, you can heal faster, sleep better, manage your pain, manage your energy, and in general, improve your body systems. Developing your intuition also gives you greater mental acuity. It helps you be a lot clearer, less confused, better mental focus and able to make your decisions more easily. So there really are tremendous benefits to developing your intuition on a spiritual, emotional, physical and mental level. Now, before we get into the main part of our webinar, what's the evidence for intuition? Because traditionally, science and intuition have... Um, not necessarily been in agreement, but it's actually changing. Now they're studying emergency doctors and nurses and realizing that they use their intuition in their work because there's no time to consult a medical journal. You just have to know what to do immediately. There was also a study from a while ago where they validated that pregnant women mostly can intuit whether they're having a boy or a girl. <laughs> they don't need the ultrasound to tell them, they, their intuition tells them. And there's a very recent uh, study on business leaders who also say they use their gut, their intuition, when, have, when they need to make decisions fast. So scientists are starting to study it. There's really good evidence um, now um, on that side to convince people who perhaps in the past wouldn't have been convinced that intuition is a real thing now do we do we all believe that we're all intuitive is everyone on this planet intuitive what do you think you can write in the chat whether you think everyone's intuitive if you like because there are people out there who want you to believe that intuition is something that only special people have, you know. I'm the seventh son of the seventh son of a long line of mediums and that, that makes me intuitive. But, you know, it's, uh, it's not true. It's who we are as spirit. It's how we communicate as spirit. And most people have had their intuition turned down because our culture doesn't support it, but it finds its way through to people's awareness. So for example, over 95% of people have had a deja vu experience. Up to 98% of people have actually had a precognitive dream where they've had a glimpse of the future in their dreams. And 20% of people say that they have lucid dreams once per month. And the reason all these examples have to do with dreaming is because the intellect can actually be quite a big block to, to your intuition. And we're also trained in our intellect. And so those times when you're just dropping off to sleep or just waking up can be really great moments of intuitive awareness. So just take a moment to imagine what it would feel like if you had access to your intuition to help with your most pressing questions. For example, in your career, if you've got questions about whether to take a job or a promotion or change your career or report your boss for being difficult, you could use your intuition to help you know the answer. Or if you've got blocks to your abundance or, and you don't understand why you could use your intuition to see what beliefs are causing you to have your um, your money set point too low it can give you information on your health you know maybe the doctor says you need to have your gallbladder removed and your intuition says no you can heal it and this is how 
It can give you information on why you're here and uh, what you need to do to feel fulfilled. It can help you with your relationships, family, friends, lovers. Imagine if you, if you could use your intuition to guide you in decisions relating to all these areas of life. It would be amazing, I think. So let's get down to business. Let's start to look at what blocks your intuition and what action steps can you take to unlock your intuition. And it's a good idea right now to grab your journal and make some notes. And what you might want to do is just make a table that looks a bit like this. Seven key steps to experience your intuition style and list one to seven. And we're going to go over the seven main intuition challenges for people. And as we go through it, you could make a, give yourself a score between one and 10 of how much you feel that one affects you. So you can get, you can get a, a really good feeling for what is preventing you from accessing your, intu your intuition. Because it might be a little bit different for each of you. So this slide is the number one excuse or barrier that I encounter for people who want to develop their intuition, who want to develop a spiritual practice but can't. It's that I'm too busy. My life is busy. I'm really stressed out. I've got all these responsibilities for other people. They rely on me. Um, I've got this big to-do list that I have to do. And that makes me agitated. And so I can't even relax when I do get five minutes to myself. And um, I'm really tired. So if I do try and meditate, then I fall asleep. So on your list, write down that step number one or challenge number one is being too busy or having the perception, the concept that you are too busy. And give yourself a score. How, how much do you use that excuse? And of course, step one that you need to take to develop your intuition is to have a consistent meditation practice. Meditation is what the sages and spiritual masters have used for centuries and centuries. That is the way to access your, intu your intuition because it lets you tune out the distractions of your busy life. Your intuition is inside you. It's not outside you. And you need to be able to turn within in order to access it. So step number one is to develop a consistent meditation habit. To commit to yourself to really evaluate whether it's true whether it's true that you're too busy. Buddha described the human mind as being overrun by drunken monkeys. So I'm sure a lot of you can identify with having incessant mind chatter. Whether you're in obsessively going over the past, worrying about the future, going over your to-do list, or whether you have a really strong inner critic or outer judge so that you just can't stop criticizing yourself and other people and situations that you find yourself in. A chatty mind can be a big block to you accessing your intuition because your, your, your mind, your thoughts, your thoughts are not your intuition. Your thoughts come from your brain. So step number two is to find a way to quiet your mind. Accessing your intuition requires that you quiet your mind chatter enough to tune into that still quiet voice inside of you. So write down that block number two is mind chatter. And the step is finding a way to quiet your mind. And of course, meditation is a great way to do that. Block number three 
is emotional ups and downs, being on an emotional roller coaster. Because that can distract you from your path and your purpose. So do you suffer from this? Do you suffer from uh, feelings that are out of control? Uh, being emotionally triggered by other people, finding it difficult to calm yourself down, feeling overwhelmed, knowing that you've stuffed some things down and you're ignoring them and you're in denial of them. Once again, your emotions are not your intuition. Your emotions are communications from your body to give you some feedback about how it is experiencing the situations that you're putting it in. So step number three is to find a way to calm your emotions. If you're allowing your emotions to dominate your reality, it can cause you to drown out your intuition. So if you're feeling engulfed by emotions, then you need to learn how to calm them down and separate yourself from them so you can take charge. You are spirit. You are not your mind, you are not your brain, you're not your thoughts, and you're not your emotions. So to access your intuition, which is a, your spiritual form of communicating, you need to find a way that the, the noises from your body are not drowning out the voice of your intuition. So... Follow, follow with your notepad and just give yourself a score for those top three that we went through, being too busy, having um, a mind that won't stop thinking or being triggered emotionally. The next block that I encounter is effort. People get stuck in trying really, 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 really hard. So I sometimes get people saying, well, but I've read these, this book and that book and I've been to this workshop and that workshop and I own crystals and I own tarot cards and I've got all of these different things. And, um, you know, and I've done all of these things. And so why isn't it working? Why isn't it working for me when I've done all of these things? And the answer is that you're approaching your, you're, you're approaching your intuition with effort and Effort is a sure, if you're using effort, that's a sure sign that your body is attempting to dominate your spiritual journey because spirit operates without effort. Your body operates with effort. Spirit exists outside of time and space. Body exists within time and space. Everything your body does requires effort. So if you're using effort to access your intuition, it's not going to work because you're not approaching it as spirit. So write down step number four, what I need to do to access my intuition is to find a way to release effort. Your intuition is guidance from you, the high vibration spiritual consciousness. Unlike your body, you are infinite, formless. Like I said, you're outside of time and space and you don't use effort. So step number four, release effort. And all of those things that people say, let go and let God go with the flow and step out of your own way, they're actually all very true. So we've got three more blocks to go through. The next one, I call it spiritual perfectionism. And what it really means is it's, uh, it's having expectations about what it is to be intuitive. So a lot of people compare themselves to others compare themselves to their teachers or you know have heard something about what it's like and expect it to be that way for them people get confused about their intuition and their ego and one of the signs that you're in your ego is if you are getting in co competition and comparing yourself with other people whether you're invalidating yourself or um, elevating yourself above them it's competition being stuck on an expectation of what intuition is or achieving an ideal state of being um, it gets in your way of experiencing your intuition directly in the moment so it's really important to just be able to allow it to be what it is for you and allow it to be what it is for other people and and not 
to, ha to let go of your expectations. So step five, let go of your expectations and recognize that everyone is unique. Each individual has their own unique style of intuition. You're different to everybody else around you. So let your unique experience of intuition unfold naturally without superimposing ideas of what it should be like. The next one, step number five, block number five is, actually, am I on number six now? I've lost count myself. Well, I think the next one is uh, number six, actually. And fear. And this is a big one because there's lots and lots and lots of things that people get afraid of when it comes to intuition. It can be fear of seeing the truth, uh, fear of seeing yourself clearly because underneath um, the surface, somehow you believe that you're bad in some way or that others are bad. Fear, fear of seeing something scary, fear that you will um, have an obligation or a responsibility about what you see or you you have an obligation to tell other people about what you see and fear that um of what you what will what impact it will have on other people um, there's so many fears and there can even be fears of being punished in a past life for your intuition fear that you'll go crazy that you'll lose touch with reality fear of your own power Fear of the change that will come when you access your intuition and what that will mean for your relationships with other people. So fear is a huge block to access your intuition. So step number six is banish fear. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, it's not your darkness that frightens you the most. It's your light. It's your power. And of course, usually the fear of something is a lot worse than the thing itself. So take your power back by eliminating your fear at step number six. And number seven, I find that the logical mind is a barrier for most people because it causes them to doubt their intuition. We're so entrenched in having the intellect as our primary operating system. We are trained through our education system and our culture, uh, the intellect in Western society is put on a pedestal. Um, so most people are so programmed to operate from it, they get confused and they can't tell the difference between their intuition and their intellect. So I, I get all these questions, how do I know it's not my brain? How do I know it's not my mind? How do I know it's not my ego? How can I tell the difference? So it's really important to know how you can set your intellect how to set your intellect aside in order to focus on your intuition and there are techniques that you can use to do that so step number seven is learn to trust your intuition by being able to tell to tell the difference between your intellect your your intellect and your intuition and some of those other things that can fool you like your emotions and your thoughts and your ego so that you can stop doubting yourself and finally trust your intuition. So here are the seven steps to experience your intuition. Develop a consistent meditation practice. Quiet your mind. Calm your emotions. Release effort. Let go of perfection. Overcome your fears and trust your information, your intuition. And if you like, you can put a note in the chat and let us know which, which ones were most significant for you. Which, which, which ones did you really identify yourself? You know, was it the busy mind? Was it the crazy emotions? Or was it one of the other ones? Now, obviously, you can receive your intuitive messages and still be blocked from following your intuition. So the next step is to have the courage to take action. 
because a lot of people get blocked here you know they they know that their their intuition is guiding them in a certain direction and yet they still can't bring themselves to take that next step so i'm just going to finish off this section with another quote from a scientist nikola tesla my brain is only a receiver in the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge strength and intu- and inspiration I haven't penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. So like Tesla says, you are a powerful receiver. You can access any information you need to support your life journey. And the way that you can do it is through your intuition. So, In a moment, we're going to look at the four intuition styles. I'm just going to see what everybody wrote in the chat. So Amber says, emotional ups and downs and spiritual perfectionism. Alex found that Alex had a busy mind and used effort. And Elaine, doubt and trusting intuition over intellect. So quite a range of different blocks that people are on the call are experiencing. All right, so grab your journals again. We're gonna move on to the next section of the webinar. And if you want, create another table. And this time we're gonna look at four styles of intuition. And we're going to drill down a little bit more into some more specific challenges associated with those four styles of intuition and give you some examples of what it's like to experience them. And so you might start to uh, develop an insight into which ones you've experienced so far in your life. And I'll just mention, just because you might not have experienced one doesn't mean that you can't develop it. So, Style number one. And here are some challenges that people with this intuition style can typically encounter. Difficulty setting boundaries with other people, emotional boundaries, being being a people pleaser, putting other people first and putting yourself last, confusing love, emotions, and sexuality. Um, being a kind of magnet for other people to come to you and share their emotional issues, being labeled as a sensitive child who gets upset too easily, having a tendency to be emotion, get emotionally drained, confused, feel overwhelmed, or um, you can have a tendency to get into arguments more or the opposite of that, which is avoid confrontation. So, This particular intuition style is called clairsentience or clear feeling. It is an aspect that is channeled through the second chakra and its primary purpose is actually body-spirit communication. So you, the spiritual consciousness, being able to tune into the emotions of your body and uh, you know, and, and through that feedback, um, deliver some guidance to help your body feel better. So people with this type, particular type of sensitivity often call themselves empaths. They're the ones that say they get overwhelmed by the emotional energy of others. But if you learn to overcome those challenges, it can actually be a real gift. Um, so let's explore if you've ever experienced clairsentience. And here's some examples of what it feels like to experience your clairsentience. If you've ever had a gut feeling about something, like a feeling in your gut about a person or a situation, like somebody, perhaps somebody, this person's really not right right for me on the surface. They look like a nice person, but I've just got this gut feeling about them. Or a feeling of excitement in your gut that something's about to happen. Or if you have a tendency to know how other people are feeling, 
even when they don't tell you how they're feeling, somehow you can sense it. Or you can, if you walk into a room, you can sense the sentiment, the emotional sentiment in the room um, as you enter. If you've had any of those experiences, then you have experienced your clairsentience. And here's just an example of a, a past student of mine who, when she first came to see me, she, her life was full of all of these symptoms that we've been talking about. It was full of emotional ups and downs um, and all her challenges related to, you know, the emotions and her second chakra. So we worked on helping her to master her second chakra. She developed her clairsentience and she turned what was a challenge into an opportunity because now she is a doula and a shaman and specializes in women's sexual health and fertility and having babies. All right. So he, so take some notes if you identified with clairsentience and then here is another intuition style. Some of the challenges that can be associated with this one are, can be uh, control situations. Either you have a tendency to want to control other people or be the victim and feel like you're being controlled by others. Maybe have a tendency to give your power away to others. Or maybe as a child you were called a know-it-all. Um, and had a tendency to share everything you know with others and feel like your information is the best information in the world and everyone else needs to know it. So not allowing space for other people to have their own individual knowing and information. Sometimes uh, you can lose touch with reality, impose your belief on other people um, and get lost in other realities and other dimensions of consciousness. So. This intuition style is associated with the crown chakra. It's called claircognizance or knowingness or higher knowing. It connects you with source energy and your higher wisdom. So if you've ever known something without knowing how you know or why you know, and there was no logic involved in you knowing, you didn't have to process it in your brain, you just instantaneously knew it, then, that, then you've experienced your knowingness. So some examples might be you're driving to work and you somehow know to take a different route and then when you get to work you find out there was an accident on your usual route. Or you know the answer to a question on a subject that you never studied. Or you know your friend coughs and you know a, a herb that would cure her cough. That's a silly example, but just, just knowledge that, that drops out of nowhere um, and yet you're certain of it. So if you resonated with any of those examples, then you've experienced your knowingness. It's your ability to instantaneously tune in to your higher knowing. And again, here's an example of one of my clients. Um, it is a real client, although in, in this case, we've given her a false name and it's not her real picture. But she, she had very controlling parents. And so she got into a pattern of abusive relationships. So she had a string of abusive boyfriends. She even joined a cult where she had to do what the cult leader said. So she totally had this pattern of giving away her power to others and really just believed she was a complete victim. And so she had a lot of a lot going on in her crown chakra and amongst other things we worked on clearing it and teaching her about owning it and helping her develop her or, or distinguish her own knowingness and her own information from the information of other people so now she really knows her own mind she's reclaimed her power and she's very focused on allowing herself to create the life that she wants for herself as opposed to doing what other people tell her she should do okay to so make some notes if you resonated with that one and we're on to in intuition style number three um so some of the some of the things that can be a challenge is the intellect in particular for this one and 
also being afraid of what you will see sometimes some past life karma a tendency to blurt blurt things out to others um, to be invalidated to have your perception of reality invalidated by others um, and giving advice to other people as opposed to neutral information they can be some of the symptoms of this one and what we're talking about here is clairvoyance and this might be one that you're fairly familiar with because it's the one that most people think about when they think about intuition it's the one that's based uh, located in the sixth chakra or the third eye it's the ability to see spiritual phenomena to tell the truth from a lie to see clearly about yourself and other people so some examples might be seeing something that isn't really there having an invisible friend that you used to see and talk to when you were a kid maybe seeing a ghost or an angel or a, somebody who's passed over or colors around people or visions of other realities so there there's a, a lot that you can see with your clairvoyance so if you've ever had experience any of those experiences then that's your clairvoyance it's your ability to see energy this lady is an engineer that lives in australia and she came to me because she'd been having a lot of experience of seeing stuff uh, but because of her intellectual training really doubted it you know well what's these silly things that are happening to me surely they're not real but it turned out she was of quite a gifted clairvoyance and when she was taught how to correctly use her sixth chakra and how to override her intellect she was able to clear her invalidation and now loves using her intuition it's not something she wants to do as a career but she she uses it to help make life decisions so one more intuition style that we're going to talk about today i get a lot of questions about this one actually um, and i think it's because people get the most scared if you start hearing things that aren't there unexplained voices clicking noises music ringing in your ears um, they can all be signs of this particular type of intuition being activated and of course when when you're hearing different voices which voice do you trust or feeling like you're crazy i just can't turn these voices off in my head there must be something wrong with me um, maybe i need to go and see a psychiatrist uh, and you know just being able to tell what's your inner voice versus uh, and what's a helpful voice that you can trust so this one relates to clear audience it's an aspect of the fifth chakra it means clear hearing or inner listening and you can use it to hear spiritual phenomena to talk to your guides to be uplifted to higher frequencies of joy and energy to hear the music of the spheres of the angelic realm so if you've ever for example as you're dropping off to to sleep or just waking up heard someone say your name that could be your clear audience or you've heard beautiful comforting music when you were in trouble that could be the music of the spheres sending you healing vibrations or a song started playing in your head with just the right message just the thing you needed to hear in that moment and then you turned on the radio and the same song was playing that can be clear audience so this is somebody again it's not his real name or picture but he was having he's a scientist had unexplained voices and original music downloading in his in his head and he sought a logical explanation for what was happening and what was actually happening was he was channeling spiritual music and um, so he learned about his fifth chakra and clear audience and he prefer he, he doesn't like he still doesn't like to call it um, you know a psychic ability but he he has accepted that he has a mystical muse and has embraced his musical gift. 
So which intuition style are you? Maybe, um, maybe you can write it down in the chat if there was one that you resonated with more. And we're going to have a good time to talk at the end and you'll be able to ask me questions and share your experiences. But I just wanted also to offer this link because there is a quiz on my website. It's both on the home page and there's also a page where you can download a bunch of free stuff. Um, it's an intuition style quiz, which you can take yourself through a series of questions. And at the end, it will give you a score that will give you some information about your intuition style. So feel free to go to the website and download that. So Amber identified with clairsentience but also clairvoyance and clairaudience that's pretty cool okay another quote from a scientist um, we're just entering what may be called the field of vibrations, a field in which we may find more wonders than the mind can conceive of. Everything is energy. Everything is vibration. As spirit, you are high vibration energy and you communicate through the language of vibration. So all intuition is, is different ways of tuning in to different vibrations. And those vibrations are beyond the wavelengths that you're, um, normal senses can tune into. Oh, it looks like somebody else. She has all of them and can relay all. Oh, so Alicia. El, oh, I hope I pronounced it right. El, Elisheba has all of them. So that's fantastic. All right. Oh, Elizabeth just spelt it wrong. <laughs> oh, all right. So. Um, I've kind of forgotten what slide is next, but let's see. So, 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 so far, we've talked about four different ways of being intuitive, seven important steps to awaken your intuition, lots of challenges that you can experience along your spiritual journey to become an awakened human who is able to consciously use your intuition we've learned a little bit about chakras and intuition and the relationship between chakras and the intuition and we've also delved into a few examples and we've heard from marie now who is um having clairsentience and claircognizance as her main ones. Okay, so, oh, I haven't updated this slide, so bear with me. So um, we're gonna have lots of time to chat and lots of time for you to um, ask me your questions. But I did want to just take a moment to tell you about um, my intuition development course, which is called Unlock Your Intuition. The next class doesn't start in January, it starts on March the 5th. So I think that's about two or three weeks from now. And it, it's taught like this on webinar. And um, I'll give you some more information about how, how it works. But this is the curriculum. This is a condensed version of the curriculum. And I'll give you a link where you can read the curriculum in more detail. But all of these things that we discussed today, all of these things that can block your intuition, we have a focus on helping you to clear them. And at the same time that we're helping you to clear them, we're also teaching you techniques to activate and use your intuition. So each module includes a lecture which is delivered like this, a 45 minute meditation which teaches you um, specific techniques to activate your intuition and help you overcome the blocks and a live question and answer session where we talk a bit like we're going to be talking at the end of this session where you, where you know you share your experiences you ask questions about what you've learned and you get guidance from me and because there's been um a few groups of students that have already gone through this all of the q and a's are recorded so you get the benefit of 
not just your own Q&A, but you can watch three hours of, um, over three hours of recorded Q&A from other students. And one of the things I find is that there's lots of impromptu teachings just because of the diversity of questions that students ask. Um, you get um, not just what's taught in the curriculum, but anything, whatever you need to learn about, whatever comes up for you, we talk about it in the live Q&A. And there's an enormous amount of support materials probably more than you can get through in the time of the course but once you sign up for the course you have access to it beyond the, the time that we're actually doing the live session so you've got plenty of time to go back over it um, there's a buddy system if you want so that you can buddy up with another student and practice on each other there's a private facebook group where um, outside of the live q a you can post questions and like i was explaining this archive of questions that other students have asked also at the moment included is a couple of breakthrough sessions with me so if sometimes people have something that they don't want to share in front of the other students so these breakthrough sessions are really really great for that if there's something you just want to talk in private with me about get some or, or it needs a little bit more time than is available in the, in the q a session and and this is not going to be available forever but at the moment you also get a bonus course so you get to choose one of these four ones that we talked about another course that you add on at the end and it's included in the price of this course again i'm silly and i didn't update my slide but <laughs> the um the course is going to begin on the 5th of March and that's a Monday probably the Thursday or Friday before we'll have a get-together like this where everyone can meet each other and I usually do the live sessions on Thursdays at a time depending on the students that join right so if everybody was a West Coast person we could probably start a bit later but to accommodate people on both sides of the country we do um, six o'clock because it works for a few more time zones and I'll just make a few comments on why this program is different I'm there live it's not pre it's not pre recorded you have access to me live it's a small group um, and you you know there's if you need accountability there's ways to help you be accountable because a lot of what happens when people sign up for these courses is there's no way to be accountable and you just give up you hit you hit a problem there's nobody to ask and you just give up um this is the link to the course i'll send you this link by email as well but if you wanted to write it down it's just my website with unlock your intuition now everything that's in the course is it's it's worth quite you know it's i estimate that it's worth this much but of course that's not what i charge you for the course so the current investment is um 699 you can pay in three installments i think installments is well, i don't know if i've spelled that wrong hmm. and um the other thing is i i know that this course is really helped a lot of people and so it's not really any risk to me to give you a 30-day money-back guarantee so you can actually sign on to the course and try it out and if for some reason it's not working for you you can get your money back now i also just want to if if you think it's something that you might like to do then I want to offer that you can set up a private time to talk to me about your intuition, your specific blocks, your gift, and, re and explore in a bit more detail whether the course is something that can be helpful to you. So there's my phone number and an email address that you can connect with me directly through. So I'll give you a moment to write that down. 778-235-3039 and 
info at drlesliephillips.com. I think you all probably got my email address anyway because um, you probably got a couple of reminders about the webinar. All right, so now it's time for the Q&A. The other thing I want to say is um, if you want to see testimonials of the course there's a bunch of testimonials on my website i think i've got them at the back of the slide deck but i we won't go through them now um i will send them to you and there's a, a big long list of students who've just said amazing things about the course and how it's changed their life so i'm now going to unshare the screen and we can have a chat. Give me a moment. There we are. Stop share. Ha ha. All right. So what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm not going to um, unmute all of you at once. I'm just going to go round the circle and ask each of you in turn if you have some questions. So I'm going to start with Amber. And by the way, this is how we do the Q&A in the course. We basically just go around the circle and ask people if they've got questions. So Amber, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, there we go. There do, we you, go. do you have a question? I can't really think of anything right now. Is that okay if I don't have a question? Yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. And um, so what was your main intuition style that you've experienced so far? Clear sentiments. Yeah. Um, sentience and clairvoyance. I've, right. I've, I've started to see things before they happen. Um, where I work, when I saw a black dog run in and I was looking around for him and thought, oh, that was strange. And then 15 minutes later, a black dog ran in. And so little things like that are starting to happen. Well, and that's very cool. And you know, um, you're, yes, you're using your clairvoyance, but you're actually using, possibly using one other ability and, and maybe two. So um, the ability to tune into future events is called precognition. It's slightly different than just pure clairvoyance because what you're actually doing is you're using clairvoyance and claircognizance together. You're using the sixth and seventh chakra together um, in order to um, tune into future events. And um, the other thing is animals communicate through telepathy, which is another intuitive gift. So I don't know, maybe the energy of that dog was, <laughs> yeah. maybe it knew what it was going to do and you, and you tuned into it. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Great examples. Thank you. Thanks. So I am now going to unmute Ella Sheba. Hello. Hi. I can't, I can't see you. I think I can see your ceiling. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not uh, presentable right now. So. <laughs> That's okay. What, do you have any questions? Um, I can't really think of any. I mean, my ability is very, um, it's kind of all over the place and quite accurate and it's very strong, uh, but it's not uh, really focused. I don't know. I've had so many experiences of um, all of these, you know, abilities and um, much to get into now, all the stories. Yeah. But it's, it's just um, like the clear sentience seems to be the strongest, but also the clairvoyant. And it's like, I, but I always think it's me. Like if I'm feeling a fear, or like I get, I get intuition like an, I'm, I'm, I'm an empath, right? Yeah. Very empathic. And, um, I've had other uh, people who are um, also empathic, like at my, my, I'm in school right now. I had a meeting with you the other day, so. <laughs> ah. Um, Elizabeth, um, so I hope you remember me, but. I can't see you, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, phone, so. Yeah, I, I did about over, I did about thirty five sessions. It, was it at the Body Soul Spirit Expo? No, it was over the phone. Um, oh, over the phone. Oh, okay. Uh, uh. Couple, so, but anyway, uh, so I'm doing the RNT program, and um, 
with the teacher there up in the upper term that I had a session with, and we somehow got talking about this. About, I, I said, oh, I get messages about things, right? Mm. And uh, she says, oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're an empath like me. That I recognized you from the very first term, the first time I saw you, because I am that. I am an empath. Yeah. And I'm so relieved to talk to her and to somebody that understands, right, what I'm going through. And yeah. And also in my work, um, where I work, there was a fellow there who told me, oh, you have the third eye. I recognize it because I have it. Just in a private com- you know, conversation to break. So that yeah. kind of freaked me out because I didn't think other people could tell. And... Yeah, it, it kind of freaks me out, to be honest with you. There's a lot of fear around it because I have a feeling that as a child, I was very psychic and I it was suppressed. Yep. There was a family. My mom has it, but she denies it. My grandmother had it. But there's a total denial, right? So Yeah. Well, um, every single human has intuition. Um, and so... Um, and most of us, at least in our Western culture, have it dialed down. <laughs> and it can be for various reasons. Our culture doesn't encourage it. Our education system doesn't encourage it. And yeah. quite frankly, it fright- sometimes it frightens adults and they kind of want to control their, keep their kids under control. Um, I'll just make a couple of comments about um, that you, you talked about um, the emotional one, Claire Sentience, and um, how you experience sort of emotional overwhelm and you often think it's your emotion, but it's the emotion of another person. That's, that's a really common thing that happens to sensitive people. And um, you also said, well, it's, it's sort of like all a bit over, all over the place. So you can learn to control your intuitive abilities. You can learn to turn them on, turn them off, focus on them or focus on physical reality or focus on spiritual reality. And you can learn to discern your energy from the energy of others. And there are ways that you can own your own energetic field so that it's not being infringed upon by external energies because all those external energies lead to confusion (laughs) because you're not only experiencing your own reality you're experiencing the reality of other people as well so this what this course is all is all about is it helps with all with those things that you talked about it helps you to discern what's my energy and what's somebody else's energy what's my emotion and what's somebody else's emotion it helps you release the other person's emotion so you're only focusing on on yourself and it also helps you to learn how to control and be in charge of your for example your third eye you're taught very specific techniques to activate and use your third eye um, that help you bypass the intellect and be above the emotional level so that you can see clearly and in a neutral way. So thank you um, for sharing your comments and experiences. And I'm going to put you back on mute and go and ask Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, Leslie. Hi, do you have any questions? I do. Um, I, I met with you. Um, it was very eye-opening, mind-opening, I guess you should, you could say. I probably mostly style one, but I am wondering um, what style of intuition takes messages uh, from, from the dead, you know, to, to give messages to, to others? That's a really, really great question. And I'll give, I'll give you a, a, sh- a really short answer and then a, 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 a longer explanation. So people who focus their intuitive gifts on communicating with people who've passed on are called mediums. And there is an intuitive ability called transmediumship, which is an aspect of the crown chakra. And, but what transmediumship is, the ability to channel higher vibration energies through the 
through the physical body. So we're all transmediums because we're all spirit and we're all meant to channel our own energy through our physical body. If a medium, sometimes mediums are using transmediumship. And an extreme example is those people who do channeling, right? Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with, um, let's think of an example, Ramtha or Abraham Hicks or um, it, where the person actually is not in their body anymore and someone else is speaking through it. That's an extreme example of transmediumship. Some mediums, you might get them, they stand on stage and they'll say, oh, well, I'm feeling tightness in my chest. They're feeling tightness in their chest because the energy from the soul that's passed on is actually flowing through their body and giving them a sensation that they can recognize and talk about. So sometimes a medium is using transmediumship, but I would very much advocate against doing it that way because you don't need to allow the foreign energy into your space to communicate with a dead person. So you can also, you can use any of your intuitive gifts or many of them to communicate with um, someone who has passed on. You could use your clairvoyance and observe them and see them, right? And communicate with them that way. So, so if you get a medium that stands on stage and says, well, I'm seeing a gentleman and he's wearing, um, he's wearing um, a top hat and tails or whatever. So they're describing what somebody looks like so that somebody in the audience can say, well, I, I resonate with that. They're actually using their clairvoyance or they could use their clairaudience. Well, I'm hearing somebody talking to me and they're telling me that, um, you know, about an incident that happened between the two of you. Or they could use their claircognizance, their knowingness, and they would, um, they would just know information. And so really there's not one specific ability that someone who's focused on being a medium and communicating with people who've passed on would use it. So you, it, you could be gifted in, in one, one area and another medium could be gifted in another area. You could each be using a different intuitive ability to access the information. Thank you. Is there some sort of style that recognizes a high sensitivity to smells? That's another great question. There, there is uh, an, intu an ability that is labeled as Claire Olfaction. And that refers to the ability to sense smells as spirit. However, it's not a true intuitive gift. So what I would define as a true intuitive gift is if you, the spiritual consciousness, can communicate using that ability, whether you have a body or you don't have a body, right? If you don't have a body, you can't smell. If you're out of your body, you can't smell. Whereas if you're out of your body, you can see, you ha still have clairvoyance. You can hear, you can tune into vibration, you still have clairaudience. But... And so what's happening in Claire Olfaction is that spirit is actually stimulating the, one of the physical senses, which is the sense of smell. There's right. also something called Claire Gustance, which is um, spiritual tasting. In both of those cases, yes, you, you're kind of maybe communicating with spirit, but that spirit's kind of invading your space and stimulating your sense of taste or your sense of smell. So it's usually a, a, a smell that triggers the next step is what I'm saying. The, that whatever is going to happen, it's a, it's a smell that says, hey, wait a minute, something's going to happen. Yeah. So, so, so people can have that experience. Um, people can, you can have that experience. Um, and I would say, I would say, I mean, I'd have to look at, at the individual experience to know exactly what was happening. It may be that it's a spirit guide that is connecting with you in that way to tip mm -hmm. you off about something, but it's not a genuine, it's not a genuine psychic ability because it's not really associated with, um, uh, your ability to, 
it's not really associated it's not a it's not an intuitive gift that's being channeled through a chakra mm -hmm. it's just spirit stimulating something going it's the same as when i said a medium could um say oh i've got pains in my chest i think this person right. died from a heart attack it's because their body is being affected by spirit smelling and tasting is the same it's like the body's being affected by spirit okay thank you you're welcome okay i'm gonna go and see if elaine has a question hi elaine oh we can't hear you you might have to write your question because i can't hear you Just wait and see if you're typing. Looks like you are. I can't hear you. I think what we'll do is we'll see if we can wait for you to type something in there or fix the audio and I'll go round and I'll come back to you and I'll check the messages in a moment when you've had time to write it. Hi, Alex. Hi. Hi. Do you have a question? Um, where are you? I want to be able to see you. Okay. Um, I don't know if I do actually, but um, I did relate to Claire sentience. Um, definitely I can I can feel people's energy when they walk past me some yeah that's yeah sometimes it's like I can feel like the negative energy right more so something that can be very scary or even or whatever yeah um, and then Claire audience like I constantly have a song going through my head all the time and I have noticed lately that I'll get a song in my head and it'll be a message like to whatever is going on in the physical world with me, you know, like, like an answer about somebody mm. trying to get better, get, get back together with an ex-boyfriend. And I had the song better man <laughs> in my head, but <laughs> wish he was a better man. So I knew that was important. <laughs> anyway. So, um, what else can I tell you? Um, the, yeah, not too. I've saw I saw some. I had a few clairvoyant things when I was younger, but nothing very that stands out. And I wish I had the knowingness one. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I think my kids do though. Um, apart from that, though. Oh, that's cool. And you know, um, like I said at the beginning, just because you've not explicitly experienced them so far, doesn't mean you can't develop them. So I. I believe everyone can learn to use their clairvoyance and their claircognizance it just takes a little bit of training it's like not wouldn't it be fantastic if when we all went to school we were taught how to use these abilities which we all have and unfortunately we're not we're, we're taught to do the opposite we're taught to ignore them but yeah. everyone can be trained in um how to operate their intuitive abilities so that it is possible to have all four of all four of these yes and and you know really in this webinar which is more of an introductory webinar i kind of presented it in a very simple fashion which is sort of like almost like well which one are you but the truth is you can be all of them and many more you know um, and you can be using all of them at the same time you know, I can be looking at my spirit guide with my clairvoyance and listening to my um, spirit guide talking to me um, and knowing something at the same time. So uh, we, we all have a range of intuitive abilities. And I believe that there is a relationship between the ones that you have and what your life purpose is. And in fact, I do... Um, I mean, this webinar is to introduce my course, but I also have a, a reading that I do called an intuition blueprint reading, which looks at a profile of 20 different intuitive abilities and what it was when you were born versus what it is now and maps it directly to your life purpose. 
Um, oh, yes. <laughs> and, <nice to> know. <laughs> exactly. And, and also you can see if you've turned any of your gifts down and then we can look at why did you turn them down? What caused you to block, to block them? You know, um, because the idea is if you were born with them operating in a certain way, the current body has experienced that already and you can reset it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. I was, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I thought I had something else that popped into oh. my head. But. Well, wave at me a bit later. I'm going to, I think Elaine's finished writing her questions. So I'm going to take a look at that now. Um, Oh, question is about the connection with the chakras and chakra unblocking. I wrote a question to you last week regarding extreme blocks I'm having in my quest to do animal communication. Oh, hello. I remember your question. And you mentioned it might be a block in my throat chakra, but that's confusing because how does a person truly address a possible blocked chakra or know that they've been successful at it. Um, my problem seems to stem more from trying too hard and getting in my own way and worrying too much about not being able to do it. Right. So we can all, we can all have different things that are getting in our way. And so um, the ones that we shared today are like the most common ones that I, you know, that most people encounter. And so it looks like yours is the effort one. But in addition, um, in addition to that, we can have uh, self-limiting beliefs and concepts. We can have had uh, painful experiences that have happened to us in the past, and we can store them all over our energy field. Um, and until we clear them out the way, they can be a, a block to us progressing in our life and to us developing our intuitive gifts. And the reason that I said um, it might be a block in your throat chakra is because telepathy, which is how animals communicate, is governed by the fifth chakra. And so... Um, that would be one reason. And then your next part of your question is, I probably saw one as well, because I would have looked at your fifth chakra when I answered the question. But, um, and then the next part was, how do you know that you've cleared it? And that's, 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 a, that's, a, really good, that's a really good question, and of which I can give you a few different answers to it. You'd know that you've cleared it if your life changes right? So, <laughs> so you start to make progress in the direction that you're wanting to, well, then you've cleared the block. You can also know that you've cleared it because, um, let's, so for example, I would know that I cleared a block from myself or someone else because I'd be able to see it. So if you've developed some of your intuitive abilities, like your clairvoyance or your, or your knowingness, you can actually see and validate for yourself, oh yes, that energy is gone. Because you can see the energy of a block and you can see when it's disappeared. Um, so I would say, you know, if you, you, can, you can tell if you've developed your intuitive gifts, you can, you can, you can tell a block is cleared because you can, you can see it, you can feel it, you can know it. But um, other than that, your life would change if that energy that's blocking you is no longer there, then... Um, and, and sometimes people can actually feel that energy moving through the chakras as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Sort of, well, put a little note, if, what, how doesn't it answer your question? I'll give you a little bit more of an answer in that the course that... Um, I was introducing to you tonight teaches you specific techniques to work with your own energy field that you can use to focus on unblocking yourself. And so it's by the development of um, meditation, the development of energy management techniques and the development of your intuitive gifts, then you start to 
the, one of the first tenets of um, developing your intuition and spiritual growth is know yourself. And so by starting on that journey to really know yourself, um, you develop the ability to know your energy field and to know what's going on in it. So you, so you say, I guess I have to keep practicing. I doubt, I doubt my clairsentience is developed enough yet for me to imagine seeing when a block is gone. Okay. Yeah. So, and it's clairvoyance that you see and clairsentience that you feel, but you're exactly, you're right. You can't expect to just, but in a very short period of time, you can make a shift. So for example, this course is an, it's an eight week course with another four weeks of, um, a bonus course on the end at the end of that eight weeks you would see a tremendous shift in your ability to sense your own energy and your own energy field and like i said i'll send you some testimonials so you can see what other people have have, have said about it but um i haven't had a single student who um, took this course who hasn't noticed a big shift and really eight weeks is a short period of time so um on the one hand you can't expect it to happen instantly on the other hand you can make a shift quite quickly if you're trained in if if you're trained properly and you and, and by someone who can teach you what you need to do all right so elaine i'm gonna move on to marie hello marie I'm going to move on to Tiffany and move back to Marie. Hello, Tiffany. Hello. Hi. Do you have a question? Yeah. I'm just wondering, um, are there any specific teachings your course is based on? Or kind of like what informs the course? That's a really good question. And the answer is they're based on the ancient mysteries. And the ancient mysteries go so far back in history that they underpin many of the different spiritual disciplines that you see today. I teach it in a non-denominational way. And, um, but the threads of information and the techniques go back to Hindu teachings, Buddhist teachings, and the ancient mysteries that were taught in ancient Egypt. And so, um, and, and yeah, in particular, ancient Egyptian al alchemy. And so I, you know, I've been sort of, I've had past lives in many of these different traditions, um, learning and teaching these techniques, even back to sort of Lemuria and Atlantis, these techniques go. Um, and so, I would say no, um, they're really based on universal truths that find their way to all of our different spiritual disciplines when they're in their pure form. Um, so no specific um, teacher or book or you just sort of get amal amalgamation of it's not it's not an amalgamation and it doesn't come from a book it comes from direct experience okay. <laughs> um and what i teach people to do is how to have their own direct experience so these are techniques mm. that will give you your direct experience of talking to so communicating with source energy connecting with your higher guidance so that um you can access your information okay, okay. that makes sense and what about if you're into tarot, um, is there a specific intuitive style connected with that? Or I guess it could be maybe all of the above, right? It could be all of the above, but I would, I would say that um, clairvoyance is definitely, um, and, and here's, if, I, I think that tarot cards are, are really great. And I also think that dream work are really great, especially for people when they're looking for like an, their initial doorway to access their intuition because um, the dream symbolism and the symbolism in um, uh, you know, 
drawings. <laughs> um, it's it's kind of almost like a portal to your intuition, right? Mm -hmm. So um, because the cards are visual, then there's definitely a kinship with your Claire sentience. Um, sorry, Claire voyance, and you can learn to while you're working with your tarot cards, if that's something that you like to do, you can learn to center yourself in your clairvoyance while you read them. I think a danger sometimes with people is um, they buy a deck of cards and it has a book, an instruction book, and they read the instruction book and it's their intellect that's reading the instruction book. And then they try to memorize the meaning of the cards using their intellect. And, and the idea is uh, to tap into your higher mind um, and, 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 and have an intuitive flow that is not um, associated with the intellect at all. But I, I think that um, the imagery in tarot cards is, is great. And, it, and it's also depicting this, this, the spiritual journey of man, you know, the unfoldment of Sure, well, there's everything in it. There's Kabbalah, astrology, like every everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but if you love if you love your tarot cards, you can certainly use to learn to develop your clairvoyance and 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 be um, a better reader. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to ask Bernadette if Bernadette has a question. Hello. Okay, I'm going to ask Bernadette if she has a question to type it and I'm going to check the chat and then I can see Marie's moved to her iPad. So uh, there is another question in there, but we'll get to that. So Marie, let's see, can we hear you now? Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> do, we, do you have a question? Um, I was thinking about being an an empath and how when i'm in a group and i'm just i suppose i don't feel like part of the group i'm always feeling i don't know if it's socially awkward or actually just an empath that is feeling too much energy and can't handle it hmm. that's an interesting question I'm just looking at your energy to see what that has to do with. So a couple of comments. Oftentimes people who are very sensitive, intuitively feel like outsiders, feel like they're different because we are different. <laughs> than most humans really um it's a small percentage yeah. of humans on the planet today who are aware consciously aware who are on a conscious spiritual journey and who whose path it is to um open to these levels of awareness so it's very common to to feel that way and I'm seeing that's part of it with you. And, the, and, and of course, someone who is sensitive and open, um, the whole, if the whole planet had humans who had their intuitive gifts open, there could be no lies, right? We would all, have to, we would all be authentic because the, it would make no sense to pretend or cover up or live a facade. And what I'm seeing is that on some subtle level, what's happening in the group is that you're aware of the facades of the people that, um, that, that you're, it looks like you're wanting to be real. You're wanting to be authentic. You're wanting the other people around you to be authentic and that there's some pain there around the inauthentic nature of most people. And I'm seeing that that is, um, a primary reason that you feel on the edge of the group because they're interacting with each other and you're feeling, well, this is not, this is the, the, these people, they're not being authentic. They're not being real. They're, they're operating from their egos or, you know, whatever else. Um, there is actually interestingly something coming up in your throat chakra, 
just like Elaine had something with hers. Um, let's see if I can quickly take a look at what that's to do with. Yeah, it, it, it's because you want to express your authentic self. You, you want to be real. You want to be seen for who you are um, and accepted for who you are. And you want to be able to speak your authentic truth. And it looks like you've just felt like it's not possible in this world to do that because mm -hmm. most people don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. But that's, Thanks. you're welcome. And that's one reason to, um, be in a group like this and to learn more about your intuitive abilities because part of it is, um, and one great thing about developing your clairvoyance actually is that that gives you neutrality and acceptance. The ability to see people as they are and accept them as they are and not expect them to be different and realize that each human is just where they're at. And that's where they need to be at. And it's, you know, at this time on the planet when so few people are awakening, more, more and more people are awakening, but we're still in the minority, right? So part, part of developing your intuition and becoming an awakened human is to be able to have that level of compassion that there are crowds of people around you who just are still unconscious. Yes, yes, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm going to put you on mute. I'm going to see um, the chat and then I'll try Bernadette again. Um, so, so, Elisheba says, what if there is a lot of trauma layering and blocking your intuitive abilities? And yes, that can be. How do I learn to trust the information I'm getting? Yeah, you're right, because we can have trauma and pain in our energy field and we filter reality through it. So we see our reality through our pain and other people see us through our pain. And so part of the intuitive's journey is to release the pain. Um, in fact, you have to do it because that pain lowers your vibrational field. But in order to connect with your higher self and your spiritual information, you need to raise your vibration. And so part of developing your intuition is raising your vibration. And the way you raise your vibration is you clear those heavier, denser energies out of your energy field. And so if there's trauma and pain, you start to awaken your intuition, you see the pain, but you don't just go, oh, I've got pain and walk around. You then start to clear the pain, raise your vibration and increase your intuition that way. So it all goes hand in hand. And all humans have trauma and pain. There isn't a single one that doesn't. And so any human that wants to develop their intuition, part of it is to heal yourself. A big part of it is to heal yourself. Um, and then you said, I've also experienced events that were not clear who it was about. Sometime later, I find out a specific event and then it becomes clear. That's really common when you're looking at premonitions, actually. Um, is, it always, is it possible to always get the who, what, where, and when of all the information coming through? Um, so if you're focused on present time reality, yes. And so... Um, if you're doing future time predictions, then it gets fuzzier because what exists for us in our experience is right here, right now. We're on planet Earth. We're in time and space. And so um, part of the way I train people is actually to focus on the present moment. And it's possible for you to um, be very clear about what's going on in the present moment. But if your goal is to make future time predictions, from our perspective, the future is a probability field. It's a quantum field that hasn't happened yet. And the further away in time that you get, the less easier it is to predict something. And all possibilities exist in the quantum field. And so I would say that the likelihood that you make an accurate future time prediction is a bit more likely for a near time future event and much less likely from a for a far away in time um, future time event 
so I hope that answers your question. Um, Alex was saying she has the same experience as Marie, social anxiety relates to being her authentic self, so does Amber. Great. Bernadette, my speaker doesn't work. No question at present, but I do appreciate it all. Okay, so I think we've been around everybody in the group. If you have another question before we finish up, either wave at me or unmute yourself and ask it. Alex does. Okay. Hi. Oh. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, just that thing. I remembered the thing that I was going to say that I forgot. Um, I had um, a quantum biofeedback done. Um, do you know what that is? It's some weird artificial intelligent machine that can like read you somehow. But anyway, it, it can pick out like parts in your body that needed work and stuff too. Mm -hmm. And in that reading, the girl that re that did the reading for me got very excited because she could tell on my aura that I had an angel or something. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of weird to hear. And I always kind of wondered about that. And I don't know, it kind of freaked me out, though. Like the whole after that night, I felt really kind of creepy, like somebody was watching me. <laughs> so let me give you some information. Um, any being that is in your energy field is not an angel and is okay. not uh it, it's anything that is in your energy field is invading your space so no wonder you felt creepy because if it is an angel or a high vibration being or a high vibration guide that i would advocate you working with it will respect your space and it will never enter your energy field mm -hmm. um, without your permission and okay. so if it was in your energy field i doubt it was an angel Okay. Um, wow. So what would you, um, what would you, how do you feel about that? Is that something I should be concerned about? Do you think if it was um, something negative then? Um, so we all have relationships with outer body beings, whether we're conscious of them or not. And most of us have just like, as you go through life, you don't stay with friends with everybody that you've always been a friend with. People sort of drop off along the way. You lose touch with them. Some people cease to be a vibrational match for you. So um, it's the same with out-of-body beings. That, um, And it's quite often the case, you know, we're talking about this process of raising your vibration in order to become more intuitive. Um, what can happen is that you get out of out of sync and out of resonance with some of the beings that you've been working with in the past or in past lives or whatever. And it's time to say goodbye. And so being on an intuitive path is a process of shedding, shedding old beliefs, self-limiting concepts, and even old relationships with people in bodies and people not in bodies. And so I'd say, don't get freaked out and don't worry about it. But I would just have the concept that, um, if there is a being there that's um, that you've completed your relationship cycle with, that you're just ending the contract hmm. and ask it to leave. And sometimes there can be beings that won't leave, <laughs> you know, and then that's where you need your spiritual techniques so that you can manage your own energy field and clear them out. That's really interesting, your perspective of that, because I actually felt like, I felt like that. Like when she said it, I was like, nah, get out of here. Really? And then, yeah, I didn't feel good about it. So like, see, I trust your intuition because you're in, she was saying, oh, there's a lovely angel. And you were like, mm, that's not what my intuition's telling me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, am I allowed to say one other thing? I kind of wished I had said something about that social anxiety thing because I find myself like, yeah, I'm single at 48. I've been single for eight years. Like, I don't have much of a social life. I just prefer to be by myself. Um, so, yeah, I don't feel like, like I get invited out to, with girlfriends at work and I don't want to go. I miss out. Like, I actually say no to pretty much everything. So, is part, so, so are you having sort of like part of you saying there's something wrong with me of course, because of that and part of you saying, well, that's what I want? Yeah. I, it's yeah. what I want, but I feel like there's something wrong with yeah. me because it's what I want. Yeah. Right. Cause it's cultural conditioning and 
you know, maybe there's some internalized stuff within your ego construct. And so part, again, part of the um, journey of the intuitive is to respect the authentic self and to be able to tell the difference and to be able to de-energize and let go of anything that we're holding in our space that's in opposition to who we truly are and what we truly want. To, to learn to validate the self more. Yeah. Yeah, that would make sense too. Definitely. Cool. Thank you. You're <laughs> welcome. Um, I'm just going to temporarily unmute everybody to say goodbye. If I can find how to do it. Manage participants. Unmute everybody. Okay. So everyone, thank you so much for participating and um, we're going to say goodbye. I've been recording this, so you'll be able to watch um, a recording of it. And um, hopefully I have all of your email addresses because I will follow up and um, I'll send you a link to the course I told you about. I'll send you a link to the testimonials for the course that I told you about. And also, um, if you feel like you'd like to take this course or you're really considering doing it, then remember you can set up a time to have a conversation with me privately about that. Any last questions? Are we all good? <laughs> all good. Thank you. You're really welcome and thank you all. And like I said, I'll be, I'll be in contact probably tomorrow with some links for you to, to, uh, check out. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Have a, have a nice evening, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Leslie. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. Bye.